Good morning. In my lecture today, first I will talk about some statistics about crime in the United States. Then I will give you some information about two theories to explain the causes of crime. Finally, I will talk about some suggestions to reduce crime. Okay, let's get started. According to a study in 2001, Americans, for the first time in 12 years, believed that there was less violent crime that year than the year before. To be sure, many said that there were areas near their homes where they still were afraid to walk at night, and a number of people worried about having their car stolen or their home burglarized. So far, we are only talking about people's perceptions about crime. I mean, we are talking about what they believe. How closely do people's perceptions match reality? Well, let's look at some statistics. When we compare crime statistics between 1994 and 2001, we see that violent crime decreased in the United States. Between 1994 and 2001, violent crimes such as homicide and rape fell 52%. In 1994, there were 51 victims of violent crime per 1,000 people. In 2001, that number dropped by over half to 24 per 1,000. You might think that it is because of the improvements in the U.S. education system. However, according to the experts, there are two main reasons for this decrease. The first reason is that the U.S. population is getting older. They claim that older people commit fewer crimes than younger people. Another reason is that in recent years there have been stricter laws in cities like New York and Boston. Crime is such a difficult issue to discuss because it can be looked at in so many different ways. Today, I'd like to take a philosophical, sociological look at society and crime and talk about two theories of crime. The first theory says that people are good by nature. If a person turns to crime, the cause does not lie inside the person. In other words, crime and violence come from the environment. If someone commits a crime or behaves violently, it is because that person's environment has put violence or evil into his or her heart. If a person commits a crime, society is to blame because society's shortcomings are the cause of the criminal behavior. In the United States, the top three causes of crime are racism, poverty, and injustice. So, racism, poverty, and injustice are the most common causes for violent crime. In addition to these, there are some other causes like the breakdown of the nuclear family, violence on TV, lack of education for some children, and unemployment. The critics point out that most people who grow up as part of the underclass, that is, those in poor, inner-city settings, do not become criminals. Moreover, there are people from rich families, with all the benefits of society, who do become violent criminals. So, we need to look a little further into the causes of crime. Let's take a look at the second theory. The second theory says that people are basically aggressive by nature, and therefore they are likely to act violently. The theory doesn't say that we are violent. Rather, it says that we are aggressive and can be violent. According to this theory, society controls this aggressiveness and potential violence in two ways. By socializing us and, if that fails, by punishing us. Society socializes us by giving us values. 
values against killing and stealing, and values against inequality and injustice, for example. And society gives us positive values, honesty, compassion, and kindness. Now, this is important. It is largely the family that socializes us, acting for society. And the result of socialization is a conscience, a sense of right and wrong. In this view, a criminal is someone who is not adequately socialized or one who isn't afraid of the punishment he or she might receive for a crime. Because of the family's role in socialization, the amount of crime and violence depends greatly on how we bring up our children, that is, how well we pass on important values. It also depends on how punishment is used to prevent a crime, that is, how effectively the criminal justice system functions. Before we go on, I want you to decide in your own minds. Which of the two theories do you agree with? The first, does violence come from the environment? The second, two, are people aggressive and likely to act violently by nature? Or do you think the nature of people lies somewhere in between the two theories? I think crime is far too complex to explain with a simple theory. It can be explained through both theories. Now, I would like to move on to possible solutions to the high level of crime in the United States. As for solutions, I think most of us would agree that the family can play the most important role in reducing crime in the United States. Through socialization, which leads children to respect themselves, others, and the values of their society. Moreover, I think that after family, society, in the form of government, has a role to play in reducing crime. By overcoming the problems of the lower class, by helping these people to feel that they are part of the society instead of its victims. Many experts feel that ending the problems of the lower class can come about only if the lower class has the same benefits that the majority of the population have, such as good education, health care, and employment. The government, in the form of the justice system, can also contribute to reducing crime through passing strict laws. In another chapter, we will look at the justice system, but we don't have any more time today.